Good morning, you guys. Good morning. How are y'all? Y'all, I'm, I'm going to be honest. And I have no idea if any of y'all have experience with this. It's either my kidneys or, I, or something's wrong with my appendix. It's one or the two. Because it is right here, like in that lower part of like my, like where that area is. And last night I had such a pain that I was like so sick on my stomach. And I told us and I was like, if I just start like randomly just like screaming or something, then it's probably my appendix burst open. <laughs> so just don't panic and just take me to the nearest hospital last night it was like steady and every time that I would move it would hurt so bad um it's not in the back it's in the front it's like right here and it is it's like make it makes me so sick I just feel like sick did they check for endometriosis they did not maybe I should maybe I should look for that I haven't gotten in to see her yet so But I was like, wouldn't that be something to like fall out in my classroom because my appendix erupts or something? I had my appendix out and had pain. That yes, it's like right here. And everything that I looked up on Google, because you know, <laughs> Google. <laughs> sorry, that sounds so dumb. But everything that I looked up on Google says that that's where your appendix is. Oh, it's so bad. And, and the the problem is. Like, what I read online says that it'll start, and it's, like, within 12 to 24 hours, you're so sick. Thank you, Taylor. You're so sick. But what happened was, Friday morning, I literally woke up, and, like, I was so dizzy. I couldn't even, I couldn't even, like, I was so dizzy. I was so lightheaded. I felt, like, swollen. I was, like, nauseated. And I just didn't feel good. Like, my stomach was hurting. But it was, like, a nauseated, like, type feeling all over. And then, like, all weekend, it would, like, come and go. Like, on and off. Like, kind of like cramping if you're a girl. And I was like, I know that's not it. You know, I told y'all I took a pregnancy test. But, because I was like, this is exactly how you feel. Like, fainty. And it happened all day on Saturday. Sunday, I went to church. Luckily, I made it through the church service doing praise team. And then, um, it happened Sunday afternoon and y'all, I was wiped. I was like so tired. I couldn't even like barely stay awake. I mean, I don't know. It was like, I was like just sleeping all the time. And then, um, like yesterday I started having that pain and it's like dull this morning, but last night it was, it hurt so bad that I was like, I couldn't even walk to Dustin's deer stand to check his cameras hardly. I was so like, just hurting and out of it feeling like, I don't know what, I don't know. It's crazy. It may be a kidney stone. I have no idea what's happening, to be honest. I've never had a kidney stone before. My husband has kidney stones and he was like, it could be a kidney stone. But everything that I looked up said that like right there is like where your appendix is. So, I have no idea. I don't know what it is. I'm alive. So, <laughs> we're going to keep trucking on. Yeah, that's what I feel like. I feel like I'm cra like I'm cramping so bad. I'm just like, ugh. Just, I don't know. Dustin doesn't get nauseated with, an, with a kidney stone. That's the problem. That's the thing that's throwing me. Yeah, maybe head to the ER. I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to the doctor get my gallbladder checked out yeah I'm get I'm going to the doctor today um don't be tough for way too long I'm definitely not y'all are all like telling me you're the doctor I'm definitely going to the doctor I'm definitely going to the doctor like I'm not gonna keep going to this um going through this I'm 100% we have a clinic that's very 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 close to our school so I'm gonna go see them um and see if we can figure out what's happening. Um, but anyways, yes, yeah, so that's what I've been dealing with. Um, I don't know. It's so weird. I've never had anybody that's had their appendix out that's, like, close to me. So, I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's not. I'm not really sure. Um, 
but anyways, so I thought my pants were so tight. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like Sunday, my the pants that like normally would fit or were like super tight, and I feel so swollen. So maybe it is my. I don't know, y'all. I have no idea. I'm just updating y'all. I'm like being WebMD because I'll feel fine, and then it'll hit me, and I'll just be like, I just don't feel good. Like something's wrong. But um, anyways. So we are going to get started. We're going to be in First John chapter three, and we're going to finish out the chapter today. And for those of you who get my notes after, um, I, it'll take me just a minute to type out some of this stuff because I didn't get like all the details typed in this. And we're just gonna flip back and forth in scripture a little bit more today because um, I think, I mean, obviously scripture speaks for itself. So we're just gonna study God's word and we're just gonna do the thing, right? Um, But I do want y'all to know that like, I'm so I'm so sorry that I'm just like showing up, not feeling a hundred percent. But we're we're we do the best that we can for Jesus, and we show up, and He's always the one that speaks anyway. So it doesn't matter. We just we get up and we do it right. So um, we're gonna go through First John chapter three verses nineteen through twenty four, and this is such a good like chunk of scripture, um, because it talks about our our like our own sin and how we can convict ourselves with our own sin even though that we've been redeemed by Jesus and so I just I love it it's like I was reading it and I was like this is just so confident or comforting I was reading the word confidence when I said that this is so comforting because it talks about how we can have confidence before God like we can be confident in who we are and what God has redeemed us from because of the blood of Jesus and so um Anyways, we're going to, um, we're going to go through this passage and flip back and forth on, on the, like, do I have the, like, little side or the middle that tells you what verses go with what verse? That's where I get those verses from. So, if y'all are wondering, like, how does she know all of this? It's, it's literally in the Bible. So, whatever your Bible, like, concordance directs you to, that's what I go and read. And, you know, some of them are like, okay, yeah, that's really, that's good. It's not, not that it's not good. It's good, but you know, we, it's not like, doesn't speak to me. So anyway, um, we're going to pray and then we'll get started. Dear God, I just, I come to you today, God, and, um, I know that you say in your weakness and our weakness, you're strong. And, and when we can't show up the very best that we can in our own strength that's when you show up the most and so I pray God that you would show up that you would reveal yourself that you would show us your words through scripture that you would be with us as we attempt to learn more about who you are God and that you would show us who you are that you would give us grace and mercy to be able to understand what our convictions mean that you would uh, give us wisdom to be able to decipher what your words are and who um, are the path that you're trying to set forth for us, God, that you're forging ahead of time for us, that you've already made a way for, that you're protecting us um, in already. God, I know that unless you show up this time, it's just not going to be fruitful because you are the author of our faith. You're the one that gives us life. You're the one that gives us the words to speak, God. And I just pray that you would show up in spite of me, that you would hide me behind the cross, and that you would just pour your spirit out in this virtual space today that we could just learn more about who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we are going to be in First John chapter 3, verses 19 through 24, if anyone just got on. Um, And we're going to get started. I've got, I've got to figure out how to set my time limit on my screen on my MacBook for longer where it doesn't. Sorry, that was one of those ADHD moments. But where it doesn't like click on and off because it bothers me. Um, okay, so First John chapter 3, we'll start with verse 19. By this, we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, 
if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and we do what pleases Him. And this is the commandment that we believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as He has commanded us. Whoever keeps His commandment abides in Him and God is in Him. And by this we know that He abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. All right, you guys. So the first verse of that is, by this we know that we are of the truth. So y'all know, like I've said every time, John is writing to combat that agnostic movement that's like you're already redeemed. Like you have the redemption light inside of you. Just channel it. Like the agnostics were saying, like, just pull it out of yourself. Like you're already good enough. It's that pick you up by your bootstraps kind of mentality. Like you're good enough. It's the self-help mentality. Even all those years ago, like you can make yourself good enough to be redeemed. You can redeem yourself. And John wrote this whole like chunk of scripture this whole chapter of or book of scripture to say like, no, you're not redemption in yourself. Like you have nothing that can redeem you. You have nothing that is going to bring redemption. It all takes Jesus. Like you can be redeemed through the blood of Jesus. That's it. Period. End of story. And so John's writing to them saying like, no, you have to have Jesus to be redeemed. Um, and then we've talked about a lot in this very short book of the Bible. We've talked about how we've been brought from death to life. We've been brought from darkness to light. We've been um, redeemed. What that looks like, that looks like loving God and loving other people. It looks like um, self-sacrifice. It looks like surrender. It looks like anything that we can lay down is worth following God. We also talked about how if we practice righteousness, then we are righteous. We're in God. We are walking towards the path of righteousness because you can't practice righteousness if you're not of Jesus because he's the one that allows us to be good. We're not good outside of our redeemed person and and of Jesus. Um, And then we talked about how if you continue in a habitual practice of sin, then you're not of God because God can't um, be a part of continual habitual practice of sin. It doesn't mean we're not going to mess up. It means that when we do, we, we turn from it and we don't continue in that same habitual practice of it, right? And so, um, that's where we are at this point, right? So... I guess what John is saying or what what John is addressing here is like, you know how we as Christians, I don't know if any of y'all have experienced this, but I've had several conversations with this and I, I can kind of totally relate to this. But the closer that you get to Jesus, the more that you understand what it took to redeem you. Like the closer that you get to Jesus, the more you understand how much you didn't deserve it. And it's like as this brand new baby Christian that when you just get saved, when you just get saved, you just like, you're like, you know, um, you're on fire and you're ready. And yeah, you understand the weight of your sin and all this kind of stuff. But there's still that piece where like you really just don't understand what it took to redeem you. You know what I'm saying? Like you understand that Jesus had to go to the cross. You understand that he died. You understand all of that because obviously you, you've you turned to him. You've repented of your sin. But then it's like once you understand more of God's character and you grow in your relationship with Jesus, because that's what it is. When you accept Jesus, it's the beginning of a relationship. It's not just some one and done thing. It's the beginning of a walk with Jesus all the way up until we get to spend eternity with him. And so as you grow in the knowledge of who he is, he's going to show you more and more about himself. And your convictions become more pure. They become more surrounding of like, this is who God has made me to be. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have those convictions that um, the enemy actually uses to um, bring you down or tell you you're not good enough. Or It's just so crazy. I guess what I'm trying to say is like, the enemy's going to play on your already faults. Like, he's not going to try to get you in the place that you're not already weak. He already knows where you're weak because 
we we know from like spiritual warfare side of things. I think I just heard my little boy wake up. From spiritual warfare that side of things, we know that like the demons knew how they were going to get Jesus, right? When he was fasting, when he was praying, like the devil knew he was going to try to tempt him with food. Like he was going to try to tempt him where he knew he was going to be the weakest, right? The enemy does the same thing to us. We don't, I was talking to my friend um, that actually preached this past Sunday at my church. And, um, hey baby, you're going to come sit with me? Yes. Okay. Come here. Anyway, um, I was like, we were talking about, hold on, baby. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get you under the blanket. Say hey. Oh, are you covering up? Okay. Anyway, I was talking about the fact that, um, like, we don't give the enemy enough credit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we like to talk about how strong he is, how powerful he is, all that kind of stuff. But we, we, genu we genuinely do not give him enough credit for the power that he has. Like, Jesus had to cast him away from him. He said, get behind me, Satan. And so, um, the enemy's going to get you where he knows that you're going to be easiest to get discouraged is what I'm trying to say. For me, that place of discouragement is fear of rejection, fear of, um, like, uh, you know, in my marriage, that's how he gets me like telling me like, you're not good enough or he doesn't love you enough or whatever. Those are the thoughts that the enemy tries to get me to grasp onto. Like the things he already knows in the past that I've dealt with. And, um, and I, I just, I think we have to be so aware of that because we're, and the reason I'm, I'm going through this whole process is because, um, we're going to talk about our convictions and our condemnations and different things like that. Like, so I, I think we have to be aware that like conviction from God is, is conviction from a sin Bathroom. into forgiveness of that sin, right? <laughs> it's like kicking my tripod. I'm trying not to show y'all. He's, uh. In his, he's just in his t-shirt, so I was trying to keep him covered up, but is that making sense to y'all, right? So, like, the enemy's going to play on your weaknesses, and it's not going to be the same conviction that God's going to bring you into death to life, all right? So, that's what I want y'all to understand. Um, joined late, and that was a surprise. <laughs> so, Anyways, we're going to move on from that. I don't know if I like hammered that home, but it's something that's really been on my heart a lot is to be aware that like there are thoughts, there are things that will come into my mind that are not of God. Like there are things that will be planted. Some of that is my own insecurity and some of that is the enemy trying to make me doubt my position and my redemption through Jesus and also make me doubt... Um, how I stand in worth to other people, right? So, like, if he can get us to where we feel, like, down and out about ourselves, then we're not going to be able to help other people and walk in the calling that we are called to walk in. And um, if you haven't watched my spiritual warfare um, video, I was talking about where I got that, like, that Satan actually does, he does have the ability to put thoughts into our head. Um, I mean... I'll, I'll just, and I'll just won't go into that, how I feel like that happens. But anyway, um, the reason he's able to plant thoughts into our head is because, um, like Judas, we see that Judas was, he said that the thought was already there and there's other things in scripture. But anyways, we'll get off of that. I wanted y'all just to understand that like convictions that tell you you're not worthy enough, you're not good enough, you're not anything like that enough once you've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus that is not scripture based and talking about like the redemption that we have in Jesus Christ that is not of God like God is not going to tell you like you're worthless nobody loves you those things don't come from God um so this is what true conviction looks like this is what the conviction that turns us from our sin looks like we're going to talk about verse 19 by this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. Why? Because we need to reassure our heart before God and who God is when we, when we sin, when we fall short. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. He knows everything. He knows what we've done in the past. He knows what we're currently doing. He knows what we're going to do in the future and his blood 
of Jesus's blood was enough to cover all of that. It's not, it wasn't that, um, it wasn't that it just covered what we did before we got saved. Like Jesus's blood is redeeming enough to cover everything we've ever done and will ever do until the day we get to be with him for all of eternity. And so this specifically is talking about that inward conviction of sin. And it's vital to know, this is notes, that's what I'm reading. It's vital to know that having a living faith, um, it's vital to have a living faith to understand that God is greater than our heart because of the blood of Jesus. God is greater than our heart will lead us straight into the pits of hell, like straight into hell because we can't, our heart is going to give based on emotions. It's going to be based on how we feel. It's going to be based on like that, you know, like, oh, well, I don't feel like my spouse loves me right now. Like I don't feel like he's paying me enough attention. I don't feel those things. And okay, so what? You made a covenant to each other. If there's not sin that is directly telling you like, no, he doesn't love you anymore. Tell the devil like he doesn't get to speak that into your life anymore. Like that is, if I, if I have any advice for you, I guess this morning, um, it's a lot about that for me. Like this, this right here has been a lot about like, marriages and stuff like that in my mind because that is the way that the devil attacks me every single time and it's because that's my person like that's the person that I meant to be be uplifted by spiritually it's the person that is walks with me through life that's with me through my trials that's with me through my trouble and if you're not married I guess this is like a, a reminder to you that like the people that are closest to you in your life that are your your prayer partners your prayer warriors are going to be the people the relationship that the enemy will attack the most but my marriage is the place that he attacks the hardest and it's because if he can get me down in that he's got me down in the rest of my life because he's my person he's the one I walk through life with right he's the safe space that I come home to like he's the person God's given me to protect to provide to shepherd um our family and so the enemy is very very sneaky in the way that he does that and we have to be watchful of that and so Anyway, our emotions in times when we feel certain things will lead us straight into sin and straight into self-pity and wallowing about things that really aren't of truth. And that's what verse 19 tells us. We know that we are of truth and we can reassure our hearts before him. Why does John say that? And this just hit me out of nowhere. Why does John say that? Because in those moments where things don't feel good or, or when um, it's hard to understand what truth is, we have to go to the scripture and we have to quote truth over ourselves. We, ha we have to, that's what Jesus did when he was being tempted, right? When he was being tempted, the enemy was saying Bible verses to Jesus and Jesus combated him with Bible verses. And so he was like, no, you're basically twisting it. This is what it really means. And this is what it says. And you, you don't have power here. That's what we're telling the enemy when we quote back Bible verses to him. The correct way is that, no, like this is the truth. I'm reassuring my heart towards it, right? I'm reposturing my heart towards truth. Um, but that's what that living faith is. That's what that living faith is. It goes with us every single day. It's not a one and done type thing. It is a daily surrender, a daily pouring in of this so that we can pour out scripture and, and our heart's meditations when those seasons come, right? So, um, you good? Um, so it says God is greater than our heart. Our God is, and I'm, I'm thinking heart as an emotion. And I know that that is, it's talking about like our convictions and different things like that. But God is greater than that. He created us as emotional beings. Like it's not bad to have emotions. It's not bad to feel things. But when we do feel those things, when we have those emotions, we don't have to feel like, um, we don't have to let that control us. Like we, we have self-control as Christians. We can claim that self-control over the way that we feel and the way that we respond when we have those emotions. Um, because the God that is in us is greater than that. And it says he knows everything. He knows what we're going to do. He knows what, we're already, what we've already done. And he knows the intention of our heart behind it. He knows every single thing about you. You're not going to escape getting by with anything that God is not already aware of in your life. 
Um, verse 21 says, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. Yes, we have confidence before God. Sorry, my Bible's like in a weird place because he's like sitting in my lap. And whatever, um, look, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and we do what pleases him. It says, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. A clear conscience, y'all. That's what it means. Like, that's what the study notes in my Bible say. It's a clear conscience before God. It's a clear conscience that brings boldness and confidence in the life of a Christian. So, as we pray, we understand that, like, yes, we're sinful. Yes, we're going to mess up. But we have a clear conscience in knowing that we've... We are walking towards the path that God's called us to walk in. We're going to stumble. We're going to mess up. But we can still have confidence and boldness in the person that God's called us to be. We can still say, like, God redeem me from that. Like, God turn me from my sin and know that God's going to do it. Like, we can pray confidently knowing who God has called us to be and what he says about us as Christians. Like, he calls us redeemed. He calls us um, forgiven. He calls us worthy once we accept Christ. He calls us all of these different things. Speak that over yourself in times where you feel like you're like God's forgotten you or like you're doing something that is not um glorifying to God or you have those emotional convictions about different things like that. Pray that over yourself. Like pray to God. Like God uh, remind me that my worth is found in you alone. God remind me that Through you is where I find my worth. Through you, I have forgiveness of sin. Through you, I'm forgiven. And that way, the enemy can't tell us like, oh, you're just, you're just never going to be good enough. You're just never going to be worth anything. You're just always going to be this person that is just wallowing in it. No, you claim the power of the Holy Spirit that is inside of you and you pray that to God. You pray scripture back to him and that combats the devil. You pray scripture back to God and you say, you call me worthy because I'm redeemed by your by your son. You call me redeemed. You call me forgiven. So that's what I am and I'm going to walk in the truth of that today. Um. And then it says, whatever we ask, I'm not even reading a lot of my Bible, word, a lot of my notes. Um. It says, and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and his son, Jesus Christ and love one. Oh, wait, I skipped a place and do what pleases, what pleases him. Sorry, y'all. Like my Bible is off to the side and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. That tells us two things, right? So the first thing that it tells us is that, um, Whatever we ask, we receive of him. Whatever we ask, we receive of him. Why? Why is that like a thing? Why can we? Because obviously we ask prayers all of the time. And we ask prayers all the time. I'm sorry. I just saw a comment in it. We we pray prayers all the time that don't get answered, right? And so why does it say whatever we ask, we receive from him? Because when we walk with the Holy Spirit and when we have the God Spirit abiding in us, then we automatically are going to pray the prayers that God has already aligned our hearts to. So when we walk with Jesus, when we walk with him, he aligns our hearts to his. And when we pray those prayers, we know that we can have confidence that God is behind those prayers too. Like he will change our heart posture and lead us to the path of righteousness. It says he will lead, he will direct our paths. He will make our path straight is what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. Like he's the one that does the leading. And so as we pray those prayers as we ask those things he aligns our hearts with his and when we ask it is in the best interest and for our good and his glory like that's what that's what that means like as we pray we're aligned with God's will for our life because we're following him and we're seeking him um and then we're going to get it because he's already made a way for it. Like he's already we may not get it instantaneously it may take a minute but we know that God is just, he's faithful and he's going to follow through in what he's promised us, right? Um, Okay, and it says because we keep his commandments. That's how we know, because we keep his commandments, because we love God and we love people. And when our heart posture is centered on loving God and loving people, then we're aligned with the will that he has for our life. And we're going to walk in the purpose of that, right? 
And then it says, and do what pleases him. Do you know what that tells us? That tells us that we have the ability to please God with our actions. We have the ability to do things that are pleasing to God. We we don't just like walk through our day never doing anything that makes God happy because we're we're sinful and we're messed up and we're crooked people. No, we have the opportunity to please God with our response to how he directs our steps. Like we have the opportunity to please God in the way that we choose him over talking talking about somebody else or choose him over gossip or choose him over um, slander or choose him over, you know, that sin that we've been caught in the, the midst of, whatever it is, like we have the ability to choose Jesus and, and with his spirit inside of us, we can do that. And, um, that pleases God. Like that makes God happy that he redeemed us. That makes God pleased with our life. Like that makes God proud of us like we we do have the opportunity to make God proud of us and and proud of like the obedience that we have towards him and it's it's kind of crazy to me this is just how my mind works but it's like God you give us the opportunity to make you pleased and to make you happy with how we respond to certain things But you already knew we were going to respond that way. Like, our God is omnipresent. He knows past, present, and future. He he already sees the entirety of your life and how you're going to respond to every single circumstance that he puts you in. And still, it makes him happy. Like, still, he sees us respond, and he's like, yes, that's that's my child. You know, like, that's the person that I called out of death into life. And, um... And so it's just, I don't know. That's how my brain works. I'm like, God, you already knew I was going to do that. And you're happy with the fact that I chose you still. You know what I mean? Um, it just it just goes to speak over his on his sovereignty over our life. Like, he's so sovereign. And when we understand the sovereignty that he has over our life and over lives and over circumstances, it allows us to rest in the fact that, like, whatever happens in our life, God's already provided a way of escape, like, Um, first Corinthians tells us, but whatever happens in our life, he's already given us whatever we need to make it through. Like he's already provided everything that we need to get through it. Right. Um, and verse 23 says, and this is his commandment that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ and love one another. We already know that we've talked about that a million times that Jesus says, love God and love people. And it will all work out. If, if we are keeping those two commandments, we're not going to fall into the, the deception of the other ones because, um, Because we're putting God in his rightful place and our heart posture is focused on serving other people. And when we do that, then we're following the path that Jesus wants us to follow. Like these are the greatest two commandments for a reason. Because God, God knows, Jesus knew that like if we loved him in the position that he truly deserved in our life. And if our heart posture was set on serving other people, it would change everything about the way that we do life. Like it would change the way. It changes the way that we respond to our spouse when we're having difficulties or when we're having arguments or whatever it is. It it changes the way we respond to our children when things are happening and when they do things that um, maybe we've told them not to do that they know better than to do. Um, It changes the way we respond to work situations when it's testy and people are at each other's throats and somebody's trying to cut you down or somebody's trying to take away your promotion or whatever it changes the way that we can respond to that and the fact that we can do that the fact that we can respond differently is because we're walking with Jesus so if we're in a position or a place where we're not walking closely with Jesus we're not surrendering our life to him we're not spending time in his word we're not showing up for him to speak into us every single day, we're not going to respond the way that God has called us to respond because our heart posture isn't centered on loving God the way that he deserves in our life, right? We have to do the daily disciplines to stay in God's word. Like we have to show up faithful every single day. Like we have to do those things. Like reading the Bible doesn't make you saved. But when we're saved, we should want to read our Bible to know more about God, to love God more. Like that's a part of loving God is is wanting to know more about him and understand his character and understand who he is and how he speaks to us and who it is that we serve. Like why, why do we just take somebody else's word from it, right? 
Why do we take somebody's word from it? Why why wouldn't we want to learn ourselves? Why wouldn't we want to spend time with God ourselves? Um, he wants that relationship with us, right? Um, whoever, verse 24 says, Whoever keeps his commandment abides in God. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God. And God in him. When we keep his commandments, God walks with us. Like, God can't walk in darkness. So when we invite darkness in our life, we're trying to shove Jesus out. Like, we're saying, you know, no, I want this sin before I want you right now. Right? Like, that's what we do. We say, no, I want this sin before I want obedience to you right now. Like, I want whatever this thing is before I want you right now. Um, I'm getting a sip of coffee. Hold on. Mommy. What? To have some hot cocoa mm. and, and some and one and one um piece of candy. You can't have candy, you can have some hot chocolate mm. when I get done, okay? No, hot cocoa. We're gonna okay. Um but when we keep his commandments, he abides with us. Like he goes with us. Like he, when we love God the way that he, he's supposed to be loved, it invites the light in and he walks with us and he, he talks to us and he's able to speak to us and speak through us and, and guide our steps and direct our steps. And it, it tunes in our heart to that God wave, like the wavelength of God. Like it tunes in our heart to be sensitive to his voice, like to understand who he is. Um, and then uh, it says, and by this that we know that God, that he abides in us and by the spirit whom he has given us. Like the spirit goes with us, guys. Like I, I, I know I say that all of the time, but when that hit me out of nowhere one day, like why am I so worried about this? Like God's spirit is with me. Like he goes with me. He walks with me. He gives me everything that I need to accomplish what God's called me to accomplish in my life. Like I don't have to be fearful of anything. Like Jesus is with me. His, the Holy spirit is with me. The comforter is with me. Um, that's how in situations where things don't feel good, that's why in situations like that, we should pray and ask God to, to be with us or to sh give us a strength or whatever it is before we even go to anybody else. Because if we go to anybody else, we're pouring out our emotions on other people and we're, we're, we're spreading that like either negativity or whatever it is, but we need to go to God and say like, God, I know your spirit abides in me. You've already provided me with everything that I need to get out of this or everything that I need to overcome this or everything that I need to, um, to have the supernatural strength that it's going to take to make it through the say and to endure. And when God does that, or God has already done that through his spirit. So we just have to understand that we don't have to give in to our own emotions, or our own feelings, or our own convictions, or condemnations, like this verse says. Like, we don't have to give in to those things. Like, we understand that the God that is within us is greater. He is greater. He is better. He is everything more than this world can offer, and then that even your own self could put into your mind. Like, he's better than that. He's greater than that. He's stronger than that. You don't have to tell yourself anything like just let God speak the truth of who you are and what he's called you over you and he will do that um bro got muted before I could answer who got muted what's happening um anyways uh is answering questions she's not is she answering questions or is she not? I I generally don't read the comments because people are not very nice. So we just usually do, um, we usually just do a uh, Bible study in the mornings, and I'll hop on uh, every now and then. Little bro just wants his hot cocoa. Yeah. Hmm. People are so crazy, and like I've said um, so many times, like I, I I believe and I walk with a God that is able to redeem and give hope for all of eternity. Why would I not teach my kid that? Um, yeah, don't pay attention. I'm I'm finished with the Bible study. That's why I looked down at the <laughs> at the chat. Um, but yeah, like 
it, 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 that doesn't bother, that comment doesn't bother me anymore. I can't, I mean, like, if I, if we had believed that we had the cure to cancer and our, my kid got cancer, why would I withhold that from him? Like, what kind of parent would I be for withholding that from him? And the world is going to tell you, like, don't indoctrinate your kid. Don't, you need to let your kid choose. And I'm like, okay, but I, I have the power inside of me that speaks life. I have the power inside of me that walks out of darkness. I have the power inside of me that walks in light with Jesus. I have the redemptive power of the Holy Spirit inside of me. Why would I not teach my kid about that? Like, that's like saying, oh, I'm just going to let you choose your own way. Even though I understand and know that, like, Jesus has saved me from my sin and I get to be with him for all of eternity, but I'm not going to teach my kid that. That doesn't make sense. So, we don't have to, we don't have to feel like, any type of way about that. The reason that is such a thing is because the enemy's go the enemy's doing everything that he can to get our kids. He's doing everything that he can um to get our kids. Someone else is just mute. Yes, we do mute them. They don't have the ability to block people. They just have the ability to mute people. Um but like we we don't we don't why would we not share that with our kids, right? Um yeah, the the moderators I have, they, they can only mute people. They can't block people from my channel. I, I feel like only I should be able to do that. Um, if we don't teach them to love God, the world will teach them to hate Him. That's right. Um, yeah, I'm sure this morning was crazy. It always is crazy. Bless them. I like, I can't, one day I'm going to hug their necks. I've said that a million t times. Um, but, like, I mean, besides what the Bible tells us about training up a child in the way that he should go and when they get old, they won't depart from it. Besides that, besides that, like, the world, so it's totally okay for the world to teach our kids things and to shove different opinions and worldviews in their face all the time through TV shows and all these different things. Like, it's totally okay for the world to try to teach our kids Something that's not what we believe, but it's not okay for us to teach our kids what we believe. That's what that's what the enemy is doing. That's what the enemy is doing. He's telling us like you should let your kids decide. Like you should you shouldn't put all of these thoughts Mommy, about all this. Mommy. Yeah. I still have that finger now. Yeah, you do. You need to pull it off. No, um I the world is trying to t steal our I kids. I don't want to pull it off. Okay, we'll leave it on. And so, like, we have to be so aware that, like, there's a scheme behind that. There's a reason behind the movement of don't indoctrinate your kids. You guys, if we don't teach our kids about Jesus, we don't love them. Period. Like, why would we not teach them about our faith? And no other faith is attacked like that. No other, no other religion. Let me say that. No other religion is attacked like that. Like, people don't tell Jewish people, don't bring your children up Jewish. Hey, don't yell, baby. People don't say, don't, you know, like, whatever else. I don't know. Like, whatever else other things are out there. That's just the first thing that comes to my mind because it's such, like, a, a cultural um, religion. And so, it's like, nobody, no other religion gets attacked like Christianity. And it's because no other religion brings light like Christianity. Quit doing that, baby. Um, No other religion brings light like Christianity, right? So... <laughs> I feel like this is going downhill really fast. Um, but anyways, we're gonna we're gonna quit that. Okay, quit. You can't put your feet up like that. We gotta pray, okay? Do you wanna pray? No. No? Yes. You do? Uh, oh. Do you wanna pray? yes. Yes. Monster just um Little light white circles in her eyeballs. That's because of the, the ring light. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to pray really quick? Okay. God, thank you for all of our food. Thank you for everything else. Thank you for everything in the whole world. Thank you. I hope you make her family have a good day. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, I think that that, is, that prayer is heard more than any prayer that I could pray. So, 
Um, anyways, I hope that y'all have the absolute best day. And this is just your gentle reminder. Don't let anybody tear you down. Like, just follow in the path that God's called you to follow in and just keep your head up because that's what we do. We just keep pressing forward towards the mark. And that is Jesus and eternal life with him. So, <laughs> I love y'all and I will see y'all tomorrow, right? Just say see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. 5 a.m. Peace out. 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 Peace out.